Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of the Irish Angle on Jump To It. We're recording this at 12.30 on Tuesday, the second day of the Christmas Festival racing. So as usual, I'm joined by Emma Nagel and Johnny Ward. Welcome guys to the show. How are you getting on, Vinny? All good. I hope you're having a good Christmas. Um, as I say, we're, we're recording this in the second day of Leopard Sense, so there's no point in talking about that. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the first day of Kempton, Leopardstown, everything on St. Stephen's Day. And then we'll go on and we'll have a look at Wednesday and Thursday, see if we can pick a winner or two for you um, later in the week. So start off, let's have a look at yesterday. Big crowd in Leopardstown, nearly 16,000. Johnny, I see you're there today in Leopardstown. Is there a big crowd again? Yeah, it's it's kind of I, I, it's kind of hard to tell just now, Vinny, because as you know, in the press room, you're kind of um, you're drawn back the other side of the um, parade ring. And yesterday, I, I I actually didn't realize how big the crowd was because the, I thought the atmosphere was actually fairly muted when the horses were coming in. And obviously, you know, you'd um, the usual sort of story of, of Willie Mullins have a lot of winners, but then when I actually uh, left the track after racing. There were the, the amount of young people really was what was staggering. And I got on the Lewis, and um, it it made me feel my age, Vinny. I have to say, there were a lot of um, young people, very well dressed on the Lewis. A lot of them falling in love, with them possibly for the first time, having a great day out after the races. Probably back a few winners. And then when I saw the photos of the parade of the betting ring, and um, Brian Keenan, the bookmaker, sent me a photo, and he said they were very busy. So. So it was definitely, um, there were definitely a lot of people here yesterday. The crowd was very encouraging, and uh, I think they kind of stayed out on the uh, the front of the of the of the race course out to the stand. But an awful lot of young race course, and I think that's very much to be lauded. So well, well done to Leopardstown because it was forty quid in as well yesterday. If you aren't a student, and that's not cheap. Yeah, that is expensive. Forty quid, isn't it? On top of everything else, with the price of drink and the whole lot and travel and all the rest. Emma, you were going to go, but you were saying accommodation up in Dublin was too expensive. Yeah, yeah, the, the hotels everywhere is kind of a bit mad at the moment. So I said I'd, I'd stay at home and got to see most of it at home, got to see Kempton and didn't see much of Limerick now because it wasn't on the telly, but um, it was on YouTube. But uh, not not really a, a double screen kind of person. I just like concentrate on the one. So I just I just kind of left the play away. Or I had a few races on, which was grand. But um, no, it was grand. I actually, I, I like um, just relaxing at home with Stephen's day anyway, so it was nice. You could have gotten the, the special jump to it rate, and uh, we have a spare room in Oregon, Emma. So the next time now, you'll you know it's half price and all that for the jump to it fans. Yeah, it's a dangerous. I'll take you up on that definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at yesterday. Let's look back on what some great performances. Kempton was probably the the big one, I suppose. We'd Constitution Hill, another lap of honour. Brave Man's Game was terrific, um, terrific performance to win. Envoy Allen very disappointing. What did you make of that, Emma? You you watch a lot of Kempton. Yeah, well, Constitution Hill was just kind of a bit of a race course gallop, wasn't it? You can't, I don't know, people were getting more excited after that, but like, I, I didn't think Epitan ran much of a race, and he just went out and kind of did the same thing as he did at Newcastle, so kind of good to see him, I suppose, but I wouldn't be thinking too much into that race. Um, King George, I thought, was a great race. Um, uh, Brave Man's game kind of proved a few people wrong, including myself. Like, I didn't actually think he had much under the body. I thought he was a bit of a bridle horse, but... He showed a bit of guts to um to hold off Lampresse. Uh, I thought he got a bit of a funny ride. Lampresse was jumping out in front on top from the whole time, and Har Harry Cobbton decided to stay there. And it could it could have been finished in the end, but it, look, it worked out in the end for him. But um, I don't think that Galloping Deschamps and Cole will be too worried watching the King George personally. Um, it's kind of hard to see a Gold Cup when I come out of that. I'd say. Yeah, well, it certainly doesn't look like it's going to be Envoy Allen either. That that bubble has certainly burst at this stage. Johnny, did you see much of Kempton? Did you see that race? I didn't even. Yeah, the, the Envoy Allen. I mean, I, I thought the gamble on him and down Royal was, was mad. And, and uh, he duly uh, landed the gamble. He was well backed again. But I mean, I suppose if you read into Henry's comments for the uh, for the race, he's, he's clearly gotten issues. And uh, those issues will be surfaced. He was beaten a mile out and probably he had, had wind issues or burst or something. He definitely didn't run his race. And basically his future is... Um, he's never going to amount to the horse that he was going to amount to anyway now because you can't trust him at all. And um, that was an absolutely lifeless performance. Raymond's game, the one thing... Um, I, I wouldn't write him off as quickly maybe as Emma. I think in fairness, some things went a bit awry for him at the end of last season with the with Cheltenham initially. And then obviously I think he's, you know, he probably had an off day uh, at entry. And he would have been absolutely trained to the minute to win the King George. I think this was his big aim this season. Paul Nichols has kind of repositioned his narrative a bit now where I think he tries to go for other targets in Cheltenham because of the 
uh, the depth the depth of the Irish horses. But um, I still thought it was a good performance. He beat the right horse and was beaten probably by about half a dozen lengths when Lon Presley fell. Um, and he travelled really, really well again, as he did um, in his prep for the race. I thought he was very good at Weatherby. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule this horse out um, at Cheltenham, to be honest. I think he'll probably be kept quiet until then, try to get him um, at 100% again for Cheltenham. But he's a, he's a very, very good horse, travels well, jumps well. And um, I don't know, as much as we love seeing Irish winners, I, I thought it was kind of reassuring and a bit, bit of a nostalgia to see Paul Nichols dominate the King George again. Yeah, Paul Nichols. I, I, I'd be against Brave Man's game for Cheltenham because he probably won't run. Nichols goes, targets these other races, as you say. That was the 13th time he's won the King George, which is unbelievable. That's Willie Mullins-esque, isn't it? Um, the other one there, the other race we haven't mentioned there, the big one was Paisley Park. Um, winning the long walk hurdle, beating Goshen and Champ. That was that was a good performance. Great to see Paisley Park back. I didn't think the track would suit. I thought he needs a stiff uphill finish um, to be at his best, but obviously not. He'll be back to Cheltenham, I presume, and so will the other pair come March. Anything there, Emma, did you think any of them could feature when we get to the stairs hurdle or whatever else they may run in at Cheltenham? Yeah, I thought um, Champ travelled like the winner the whole way through, kind of turning into the street. It was hard to see anything getting past him, but... Um, he just kind of weathered out a bit. I think he kind of runs a bit better fresh. They'll probably head straight to Cheltenham now. But yeah, Paisley Park, he's just he's ne- he's just never beat, is he? He's um he'd be paddling along at the back and all of a sudden he just gets a second wind and flies past him. He's uh he's a he's kind of a real old favourite now. And I am not are they they're not I mean they're not that old of horses, but it feels like they've been around for generations and whether or not the stairs hurdle or, uh, it's hard to see any of them getting involved with Flooring Porter and Co. But um they kind of uh, they add a bit of spice to the to the English staying division, all right? Because even if they're not kind of at the same level as maybe the top stairs in Ireland, Ireland, um, they're they're always they're always entertaining to watch, especially uh, Paisley Park. You just never know when he's going to come and catch them all at the end. Yeah, gosh, and another one who you can't predict either. Um, looking at the Irish stuff from yesterday, Leopardstown particularly, Willie Mullins had a great day. Um, we saw some good horses. That Lossy Mouth gone very short price for the Triumph after another. Um, big victory, you'd have to say. The second horse was very keen, Gala Marceau, another one of Willie Mullins' again. That could improve a lot. It's got a few lengths to find here, obviously, um, with Lossy Mouth. Then we had High Definition. That was that was a big talking horse coming into this. Very surprised with the price of High Definition yesterday. Nine to two. I saw it was seven to one at the off on Betfair. What do you think of that, Johnny? That was a punter's got that way wrong, didn't they? They did. I, I think he was even. I think he might even have been eight to one on the exchanges at the off. Um, but if you notice in running, his price did um, contract. And I was looking at this because I didn't even think he was jumping that well. And um, he was definitely out to his right at times. Maybe there's a difference of opinion with Joseph O'Brien afterwards. This horse is rated 117 on the flat. Like I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen a horse with that rate and go hurdling. And um, you know, he was. Uh, I think his favourite for the Derby wasn't he one time and essentially in theory the way even the way he was jumping he was going to be very very hard to beat given that there were only six hurdles to jump in the race again this controversy over the low right line so I mean, you might have heard Justin O'Hanlon saying in the first at Limerick it'd be no harm if they actually told us about this it's the same thing happened at Limerick and he wasn't even aware of it and he was a race course commentator but to be fair to high definition the the, the the sky is the limit for him hurdling. He, he, if he can iron out that jumping out to his right, he didn't jump badly otherwise. And with the engine he has, if you can take to it in your first race, and it was a good maiden hurdle now, it was a good maiden hurdle. Willie's horse and third is well fancied. Um, and he won very well, probably wants to step up and trip. Um, the sky is the limit for him. Whether he'd beat Fast or Vega, Cheltenham, I don't know. But 117, Vinny, I don't know, you're a little bit older than me. Have you ever seen a horse rated higher than that go hurdling? I don't think so. Alderbrook was the best I can remember from years ago that went to stay in flat horse that went hurdling. Um, but I, I don't remember anything like this. Like he's been, he was running against Bayid and Alpinista during the summer. Um, also, when he ran in the Currid Tattersalls Gold Cup, I think he was only beaten a neck. He had five Group One winners behind him that day. So, like, he's a serious talent on his day, as you say. He was one time Derby favourite. Uh, he could be anything. That's the bottom line. You'd wonder with him as well will they go the novice route in Cheltenham or would they go straight champion hurdle? Um, hard to know. Like, you, there's no point probably taking on Constitution Hill. Then again, we'll know later in the week whether there's any point taking on Facile Vega either. Probably not. So it's hard to know where you go or what you do with the horse, but some talent and um, really exciting to see a horse at that level going jumping. Really enjoy it. Um, the other one then, Limerick, we had Jerry Kalam. One you like, Emma. You were on about him from early season. Um, he's done nothing wrong, has he? What's he? He's won a point-to-point, two bumpers, two hurdles, now two chases. 
he looks a very good horse, doesn't he? Yeah, he's unbeaten so far. Um, mm-hmm. Probably a few days ago, I was maybe getting a bit worried about the ground in Limerick. It didn't look like it was going to be as soft as it normally would, and he, he kind of runs a real slog um, over kind of an inadequate trip yesterday, I suppose. But um, no, he he was very, very good. He just looks like he's always just kind of doing enough. You know, he didn't. he's never going to probably be trouncing his rivals, but... Um, He's just a real galloper. He's he'll just kind of grind him into the ground. But um, no, I was I was very impressed with him, and I think heading to the ground advisory now, if the ground comes up up soft, it'll be very very hard for anyone to beat him. Um, Gordon's probably looking very confident now. He was pretty sweet when I was down there for the stable tour that day. So um, if all going well, he look last year. I know he was a bit fragile. They um they missed the second half of the season with him. So hopefully he'll stay sound now and get to Cheltenham because um he looks he looks a real top class staying prospect. Um. To, to come, he, he's done nothing wrong so far, anyway. Yeah, kill Crute, another bubble burst there. He, he, you can't depend on him, can you? He, he, there's been once too often now at this stage. I know a lot of people were fancying him. I did a show here on uh, last Friday, um, where Ed Quigley on the UK show was all into kill Crute. Thought he was nap of the day over that trip against Jerry Colon, but like, he just doesn't produce, does he? That's not the first time we've seen that. Anyway, yeah, we look, they, we look they, ahead to. Wednesday. Sorry, on, Johnny, you're going to say on, on that as on that as well, Vinny. It was it was very striking. William Mullins didn't seem to have any confidence that he was going to win the race yesterday. He was only a seven to four shot. He was interviewed after one of his three winners at Cheltenham and uh, or at Leopardstown, and um, he didn't. He, he was remarkably candid. So um, I don't know about Kikou going forward. He came into the straight looking like he was going to get involved, and uh, for me, he was very disappointed. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, he's a um, funny one. We look ahead to. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday in Leopardstown, two, a couple of really big races here. We've got the Jack the Bromhead Christmas Hurdle. Terrific that the horses, the race has been named after poor Jack, who died back in September in a pony racing accident. Um, and we've got a cracking field lined up for it. We've got 11 runners and we've got Bob Ollinger from the Henry de Bromhead yard. There won't be a dry eye in the house in Leopardstown if that horse wins. What do you think, Emma? Has it a chance, Bob Ollinger? Um, Bob Bob is probably not on our side of any confidence in at all. To be honest, um, I know he he was uh, won well enough in his hurdle like, coming coming back hurdling last time, but um, no, sorry, he was second behind home by yeah. home by the Lee. Um, he's not one I'd have massive confidence in. I don't know. There's just something about the way he runs. He he just never looks. Um, he just wouldn't fill me with confidence personally. Um, I think probably Florian Porter looks probably the best price. I know he's favourite, but being the being the jewel uh, snares hurdle winner, I don't think anything else in the field probably has the class that he has. So if he if he's on song, I think they probably won't they probably won't get too near him. Um, Bob Allinger is you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't fancy him personally. At home by the Lee's probably an interesting one. Can he back up that performance or was it a flash in the pen? Not too sure. I wouldn't be too confident on him. Maybe maybe took to place, but um no, I I'd find it hard to see anything beating for Port on this one personally. Yeah, Florian Porter now has given them all weight in that race in Nab, and he was given seven pounds to the rest of them. Um, but he's well beaten that day. It's twelve and a half lengths or something. I think he's behind in the finish. Uh, look, it was his first run. We know he's he's won this race before. He was second in this race last year. Probably a bit unlucky with Classical Dream winning it, getting a flying start, and they finished a long way clear of everything else, as you say. Florian Porter's gone on and won two stairs hurdles in Cheltenham, so he's very hard to oppose. But he does have a bit of ground to find up. What do you make of this, Johnny? Yeah, like the, I, I think the narrative around Henry Sars really. I mean, um, you you don't need to have a bet in this race to have a, a heavy involvement in it. And um, I think jumps racing at the moment is struggling to kind of capture the hearts of people the way it did in the days of say Denoli and B for Salmon or stuff like that because it's dominated by so few people nowadays. And I like didn't think there was an electric atmosphere when the winners came in yesterday, as I mentioned. But that would not be the case if this fella could do it. And um, you can you can be soppy about these things, but I think you're right, Vinny. There generally would be a lot of tears in the place. Um, this was a harrowing, harrowing year for the De Bromhead family and Jack's love of racing. And um, if you did believe in the in the divine and something special happening, maybe Bob Ollinger will get home. Unfortunately, I'm kind of more with Emma on this one in the sense that he's just a horse that doesn't fill me with much confidence. He sort of looked like he was going to win all the way nearly at Nav, and he didn't quite see out his race. I think with Florin Porter, three miles here and the ground here would suit him way more 
Um, and Bob Ollinger, obviously, he was disappointing at Chelsea. He then flopped again and punched us down. And he sort of maybe got his career a bit back on track at Navin. But, you know, will, it, will, he, will he be, first of all, will he be able to reverse the form home by the Lee? I'm not sure this track is going to be ideal for home by the Lee, the way he travels. I think Florian Porter is going to be much more um, at his best this time over the three miles at Leopardstown. And as you mentioned, Classical Green, that was a joke for race last year, the start that he got. So I think he should take an awful lot of beating. No okay, another race to look at the big one. Um, tomorrow is the Savills Chase. Eight runners in it. A Plutard trying to get the yeah, season back on track. The Gold Cup winner, Emma. Will Rachel Blackmore get the best out of a Plutard, and will we see the the, the Gold yeah, Cup winner true. in true form? Yeah, it'd be great to see him bounce back after this the disappointment over yeah, in the UK. Yeah. I think they were they came out afterwards and said he got some kind of an allergic reaction or something traveling over. So hopefully he's over that now. Um just looking at the field, he's he's definitely the class art in the race, oh, being the gold yeah. cup winner. Um if he can bounce back at all. Like there's a couple in the race, like Kenboy and Galvin who Kenboy oh, probably had a great race in Down Royal to be second behind Envoy Allen, but Galvin was massively disappointing and the form of that race is looking a bit suspect now as well with Envoy Allen not performing yesterday. So just looking through it, if Akutar is back on song, it's kind of hard to see him getting beat. Conflated obviously ran a massive race winning in uh, the Dublin Racing Festival here last year. He put a bit, a bit of an upset there to win the Gold Cup, wasn't it? But um, yeah, I know. I'd, I'd find it very hard to see any of these beating Akutar if he's back on song. Maybe something like Franco de Port could run a big race each way with Danny up on him. He, yeah. he, run, he, could, he can run well in Nefer Sonata to try to kind of suit him, but... It's not really, if I might throw the, the favourite into an accumulator, but it's not one I'd be having a big bet on other, other than that, really. It doesn't appeal yeah, much agreed. to me. Now, there is three of the last four winners of the race are in it because um, a Plutard won it two years ago, got beaten by Galvin in it last year. Okay, Kenboy won it the year before that as well. So it's, it's a fair race. Eight runners is great from the each way point of view. Johnny, will you have a bet in this one? Um, it, you're right about the eight runners because I mean there's a clear angle to take on and uh, the favourite in the sense of he's disappointed last time Vinny but um, at the same time Henry's horses have been in great Nick he's raised 180 I do think they're a bit of a much of a muchness as Emma said Galvin for me he was very disappointed in that town royal and I actually thought Conflated like Conflated was desperately weak in the betting and for much of the race it looked like he was doing everything right in the end he was well beaten by a horse who's obviously a bit of a, a busted flush since in Envoy Allen so they're both vulnerable and you're getting a hard, if that blue tired is back to his best he will simply win this race simple as that so you're kind of you're getting six to four you add in say is that value in the sense that is there better than 40 percent chance that he's basically going to run his race and get around there probably is so he's actually probably a bet at this i'd be more inclined nearly to back for the gold cup i think if he'd be right back into something like 72 um second favorite if he wins this and uh delighted to see henry's horse in, in good form i think this horse is probably the class act there is you're backing a horse each way. French dynamite is interesting. I think he'll give it a good go from the front. Yeah. yeah. Another uh, couple of interesting things in Leopardstown. One of them is with, there's a pair temps qualifier. Okay. Just see the horse that's top weight in it is Kate Gentleman, which uh, yeah. Emma, you interviewed Shark recently about this, a new acquisition to the yard going for the Aintree Grand National. I'm sure right. only having a pipe okay. opener over hurdles just to get him right. But he'll be an interesting horse to watch. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I saw that. Um, you'd imagine it's probably just, as you said, to just get him out for a run because the, I think the English Grand National is his, is his main target. And I think after that, he's going to head over to America to, to race way over there for the summer. So, no, I wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be backing him personally. I don't, I don't think it's probably going to be his target, the pretense. But it, it'll be interesting to see how he runs. Anyway, he was a fairly high-class horse for him at Mullins. So, it'll be um, interesting to see how he gets on with the change of yard. Yeah, another couple of things on Wednesday. We have in Limerick, there's uh, Allegory de Vassi making a chase debut. Uh, it's a small field there, should win. And one other one, Johnny, for you, is in a beginner's chase in Leopardstown, the 255. We have your horse, I am Maximus. Uh, I presume this will win. Oh, well, obviously, Vinny, yeah. Um, I, it was funny because um, this horse was entered in the, the good, the three mile grade one, the Neville's Hotel race. And uh, I was sort of tipping him up anti-post, but obviously then uh, the more I thought about it, well, Willie would probably just go for a beginner's chase with him. But it's interesting that with Saw Raw, he could have gone for a beginner's chase, but he decided, well, what's the point if we can go for a hundred grand race and win it as he did uh, on day one? So um, I think this horse is going to be very, very good as long as he's going left-handed. It's a good race now. I think he's going to be maybe even money or something like that. But for me, I can't see him being beaten the way he should have won, obviously, in his chase debut, despite jumping violently left at times against a very good horse of four and second. 
Okay. Well, look, we'll move on to Thursday. Some cracking racing again Thursday. We've got the 145 in Leopardstown as the Neville Hotel's Novice Chase. Eight runners again, which is great to see. And we've got some really good horses in this. Mighty Potter, Gaylard de Mesnil, and Three Stripe Life. They all ran in a race in Fairy House the last day. That was just short of two and a half miles. This is up to three. What do you make of this, Johnny? Do you think Mighty Potter will confirm the form over this extra half a mile? I would have my doubts. He's not going to run any of any. I think. Um, oh, I, 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 yeah, I think he's already just looking at, at starsracing.com. He's already scratched. Um, oh, so, uh, yeah. Right. We're down to seven. <laughs> We're down to yeah. seven, yeah. Um, so Gordon is going to have three strike life. He's obviously no mug himself. Things went awry for him in the, uh, the Drinmore last time. Um, but taking on, as you mentioned, Geyer de Menil. Um, it may be a little bit disappointing that we're down to seven, but this this is a, a good race, and I I'd probably be inclined to um give Three Stripe Life another chance. I think he's very very genuine. He was good in his Chase debut, and um maybe at the prices he might be a little bit written off after the Drinmore. Yeah, he made a mistake and had to be pulled up. His saddle slipped or something, wasn't it in the Drinmore? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Davey Russell amazingly since retired uh, looking after him, and uh, he's a lot better than that. Yeah. And then the other big race we have is the Madison Hurdle. Five runners at the moment, three for Willie Mullins, Stateman, Vauban and Sharjah. And up against Pied Piper and She is Electric, which looks like a complete outsider. What do you make of that one, Emma? Yeah, this it's a very interesting race. I'm um, seeing the two, two kind of two top juveniles from last year and Stateman, the kind of novice coming into opening company. We've already seen him, obviously. And Sharjah is kind of just a good old yardstick shown in there to see to see what kind of level they're running at, I suppose he's always kind of a good one to judge them off. But um, no, uh, I to be honest, I'm very interested in seeing Bob Ann. I think he's kind of probably the forgotten horse of the of the champion hurdles uh, picture at the moment. I know Willie has been kind of probably not overly happy with. I suppose it's hard, it's a hard thing to do for these uh, four year olds stepping up to go straight into the champion hurdle. Like, Willie's probably not trying to rush him too much, so it'll be interesting to see how well he runs. Um, as we said, Sharjah is probably the yardstick to aim at. You know, we've seen kind of Honey Supple beating him by certain amounts of lengths, but he's you know he's a proven Grade One winner. He goes out and wins Grade Ones um, con consistently. So if you know these youngsters can come out and put down a hammer to him, they'll 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 um, put their hats right into the champion hurdle picture. I think Stateman probably at the moment is probably the one that they have to beat. He's kind of came out and he was very impressive at his debut this year. But Warban is kind of the one for me. I think I'll be keeping my eye on him if I'm not sure what kind of price he's at the moment. But like he was just a very, very classy juvenile last year. He showed plenty of speed and he's jumping at times. He's probably a bit a bit novice But if he can get all that right, I think he probably has the ability to win champion hurdles definitely in the future. So I'll, I'll be very interested to see how he runs. See, this, this is a mystery to me. Um, Thursday, this is a mystery to me, this race winning. Because I'm doing the race for Spotlight for Limerick. And we have a two-runner, four, four-year-old race, a grade two. Yes, we have two four-year-olds running in a five-runner race here. And I, I, Willie Mullins normally, as far as I'm concerned, he normally goes for the easiest option. And you'd imagine... Boban, who's been under something of a cloud in the sense of, you know, we haven't seen him yet, go on and take on the four-year-olds in Limerick, Brazil, who he obviously um, should have an edge over. Um, so he's come here instead, as has Pied Piper. Um, the race in Limerick is, is scandalous, really. There are two runners in it. I, in all my years looking at Irish racing, I actually can't remember two horses declared in one race. We've seen it in Britain more often, but um, it's just been very disappointing. So now you have a situation where you have two four-year-olds running in, in a hurdle race in Leopardstown, but on the same day, you've only two horses in a four-year-old race. That should be a lot better than it is, and I don't think it's fair in Limerick that you've that turnout. So um, I don't even know what my point is here, but I'm fascinated to see how Boba gets on. Yeah, the, that race in Limerick now, that, like obviously there's 48 hour declarations. Anything could happen, either or both of those horses between now and mm. Thursday. So we may not even have two runners in it. It could be a walkover at a Christmas festival, which would be first time in my lifetime yeah. that's ever happened anyway. Um, just the other, the only other race for me to look at. It is, is, yeah, it is an interesting point, though. Because... Yeah, go ahead, Emmy. Yeah. Sorry, no, it is an interesting point, though, from Johnny, like, that Willie didn't throw Rob Ad into that race because, you know, he has been kind of expressing for a few weeks that he was maybe a bit concerned about throwing him straight into the champion hurdles. So he's obviously just kind of trying to test that out today with, you know, he's putting him he's putting him against his own kind of top champion hurdle horse at State, man. So it's probably a positive sign for Rob Ad himself, like, because if, if Willie really was concerned about his champion hurdle, he probably would have put him in at Limerick into the easier race, but... He's he's put him in for a bit of a test here, so he must he must have been showing him plenty at home, is what I'd be thinking anyway. And the other the other vague oddity of it is he doesn't actually get any weight despite the fact he's a four year old off state man. So I mean, 
if this were a chase, he would be. You can argue that the point of that, but like Boban for me, the turn of foot he showed at Cheltenham last year, he's a sensationally good horse. And um, so uh, I guess it's good that the five of them turn out. But I mean, you got to look at this going forward. You have seven runners in the two races and two in Limerick. If if the two of them turn up, yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing with this is the best of luck to you with Vauban. I don't think anything will beat Statement on myself, but there you go. Um, on to one other race to look at is the bumper in Leopardstown on Thursday. This looks like an absolute cracker. You've got Caldwell Potter, uh, King of Kingsfield, both Gordon Elliott's and Special Cadeau. It's a, it's a good field. There's strength and depth in it. The Special Cadeau is having its first run for Willie was with Pam Sly, won a Huntingdon bumper over a year ago, and they paid 220 grand sterling for. This looks like a hot race, Johnny. Any opinion oh, on it? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a, um, one for bumpers in general, but this is, I, I'm pretty sure this is a race I've gotten word for horses before that have flopped and turned out to be essentially grade one horses. And uh, in fairness to uh, Caldwell Potter, he looked extremely good when he won the last day. And I know th- these connections seem to have invested a lot in Martelline. They have a lot of Martelline horses, Mighty Potter uh, of nose. Um, but this, this race is just so competitive and, to be fair, it looks like the, the bumpers have been strong here. Special Cadeau as well. Um, you know, not even the apparent selection of uh, the Mullins horse in the race. Gordon having three. It's going to be a hell of a race, this one. Yeah, it could be, it could be one of the races of the festival, uh, which is hard to believe. It'll be a bumper rather than some of the others. But look, we've got some great racing to look forward to over the next two days. And hopefully all our viewers will be having a few bets. So can you give them one winner over the next couple of days in Leopardstown? We'll start with you, Emma. Have you got one for me? Oh, God, that's a good question. Um, I'm going I'm to stick with Rob Ann. I think I think he'll be a good price as well, Rob Ann, to to win the the Madison Hurdle. And I think if he if he's if he comes there a one in good form, he'll probably have this. He'll probably have the toll to do state bad. I think in in my opinion. So I'm going to I'm going to go with Rob Ann. Um, hopefully he'll be a nice price now. So and he should be as well because the, the vibes haven't been great. So we'll 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 take a chance with him. <laughs> what about you, Johnny? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll obviously give I a maximum. So I'll maybe give a horse at a slightly bigger price. The Adair uh, Manor Opportunity Handicap Steeple Chase. I remember um, back in the winner at a good price in this not that long ago, trained by Val O'Brien. Arctic Ambition is not going to be anything like that price, but the lads who bought him, uh, including um, Chips, would be well known in the betting ring. They're a great bunch of lads, and they, this is an enterprising buy. Um, he obviously won his chase well. He was then very un- unfortunate some more when he was wiped out when he was 4-11. to 11. But to be fair, he didn't. his mark won't be changed over hurdles, so they're going to go back over hurdles. Run up 105, nine more claiming four. Um, I think he, he's probably still well handicapped. Doesn't seem to do a lot of fun to start. Jumps brilliantly. Okay, very good. Uh, one for me is in the Neville Hotel Novice Chase. I'm going to go for this Gaylord the Minial. Uh, I think the extra trip is the key. Um, I think the trip was too short and too short the last day. Up to three miles would really suit, as you say. Michael yeah. Potter doesn't run now. You have three strike like to beat. I, I think he's he's better than that. I think he's a proper stayer. He was what third in an Irish Grand National. I think this is good enough. I think he'll win. Uh, mightn't be a great price, but worth a bet. Well, look, thanks for watching, everybody, and a very happy new year to you all. I hope you're back a few winners over the Christmas and have a safe and enjoyable Christmas, and we'll see you all again in the new year. Thanks for everything. Bye for now.